Christ's sake. All of y'all procrastinate I've been working hard these days Homie, are you stressing me? Yeah, oh, homie, are you stressing me? You can check my stats, yeah You can check my resume I see y'all sitting down All of y'all procrastinate I've been working hard these days Homie, are you stressing me? Yeah, oh, homie, are you stressing me? You can check my stats, yeah You can check my resume Cause I come like a killer I build it up, I'm getting iller I'm the first, I'm just getting realer Yeah, that's what I do when I build my pillars Build my castle, build my house yeah, I really built this town, so I gotta strike him. Yeah, I gotta rap and bring him down. When I really can't rap these balls, but I just gotta wing this When I'm up in the spring right now, I'ma take them out You can be the witness, I get this up on this level I've been elevating, hey, y'all been yelling, well Being lazy, elevating, going up While well, I've been walking up the stairs This life is really crazy and it sure as hell ain't fair Well, that is all okay, I'ma tell them I don't care I just gotta keep them shelf and I just gotta be the man That's really gonna do it, that is really gonna make it When I feel this gravitation in my body, man, I do it for my people now Yeah, for my nation, or for my so, and for my, for my legacy Cause I'm on my path and I be coming for my destiny All of y'all procrastinate I've been working hard these days Homie, are you stressing me? Yeah, oh, homie, are you stressing me? Hey, what's up, folks? Today I'm going to talk about the real way of the hack And this is going to be the enterprise kind of hacking Um, So this kind of works with your um small office, home office network as well But which means that and, and anyone's um computer at home and this is just an intro to offensive adversarial APT hacking. APT in itself stands for Advanced Persistent Threat. So I'm just going to lead you on what it means to be the real hacker in a black hat way, which means a malicious hacker uh, hacking into a company and um, what it means to do that. So uh, first, the uh, hacker will have a amount of steps that you would take to hack in the network. Um, first, it will be initial access, bit of recon, um, execution, persistence, a little bit of privilege escalation to get things up there, to get more rights, and defense evasion, credential access, um, discovery, ladder movement, collection, exfiltration some command and control and then at, at last they can do whatever they want on the server have full rights usually 110 percent rights mean that they're full and fuller which means that they can uh, make a breach and announce it to the whole world but um this is for the greatest uh i would say um country regional hackers out there uh, that are part of government states right so um these are really tight knit hackers who are elite, know their stuff, and they program malware. 
So, first steps hackers take is that they do deep recon. Um, real life hacking is not like an OSCPA kind of exam. It uses the murder attack cycle as one of the deepest methodologies. So you'll be gathering open source intelligence for your first time with the OSINT technique and um, then you'll be gathering victim host and identity information. Hackers can gather useful and juicy information by just building up a collection of facts and artifacts about a specific building location, employee names, employee pictures or fake IDs and um, black hats can do dumpster diving as well. Sites have been there to check if you have been breached, like have I been pwned.com, which is a really good one. And if your uh, credentials are on the open dark web already. And in the dark web, I'm not speaking of um, really just dark web in itself. I'm speaking of DuckDuckGo, um, other search engines that you can't find on Google, and many others out there. And Tor, of course, right? So. Towards the the onion router and a lot of criminals use that to in exchange for Bitcoin they buy deep dark underground stuff so yeah Bitcoin is a good way of hiding your tracks uh, but they will figure out what your company uses for your network by just looking at the LinkedIn right the job description right they'll usually look at what kind of operating systems you use such as Linux, Windows, Mac, Sun Solaris, um, many others to name Red Hat Enterprise, yeah. So, um, to drive by a victim's location, they usually take pictures of the home and network if they can. The, the first step is recon, right? The second step is resource development. So, hackers will try their best to acquire inf infrastructure information such as, um, such as they can, um, and they'll try to attack your networks with DDoS um, and this can be purchased on the dark web um, creating zombies um, this will be a good way to bring down your network for a second and then see if they can creep in and exploit while they bring down your network so one strategy of thwarting the enemy and then another strategy of entering the other way when there's a big event so um, to obtain capabilities like rats root kits and mass exploits and attacks the attackers can use these um sites on the big deep dark underground and to unbind and restricted search hackers usually use what i just mentioned the third step of the miter attack cycle is initial access so this could be like using a a website uh that has exploits in it and that expo exploits new your browser right so this can be a drive-by download zero day attack where the hackers um figure something out by the browser's hackers handbook um so they basically launch a zero day attack against the browser and find it before it finds is found by the developers themselves and the security engineers within the company and this is worth a lot of money because this is like finding a Firefox or a Chrome um, browser exploit before others find it and um, yeah talking of eternal blue eternal blue is a kernel exploit where um, this this kind of thing has been spreading out through WannaCry through other ways of initial access Internal Blue is a very was a very easy exploit to get into back in the days uh, when people were using Windows 7 and some Windows 8 because the hackers they penetrated in the kernel and then they um, upped their game and yeah it's hard for exploitation to be successful because it takes many years of discovery and attacks and uh, the Eternal Blue speaking of was found by a group named Shadow Brokers who was working in the NSA and they use Eternal Blue to vectorize the attack of the uh, network so they basically um, um, this exploit was so powerful that yeah it was a point and click exploit or a launch and exploit attack or metasploit preferably and whoever had that 
Mojo and Metis Boy could basically attack whoever was on the other end, right? So if I was in Windows 7 computer A, I could attack a Windows 7 computer B, right? Just just right right beside each other because and I would be able to like circumvent the kernel and gain system rights on a system. So system rights is basically the highest rights a user can get above administrator so that's basically root right so um, through this step attackers will usually find um, public facing applications as well so uh, and do some phishing so talking about public speak facing applications um, so it can be like a port forwarded services on the DMZ or in the public IP address right so speaking of exploiting public facing applications the hackers could basically use a for example a SSH port found on the open web or a, a vulnerable web application that's um, used on the servers and um, they could attack it start attacking it right even if it was on the cloud cloud means it's just a computer out on the ocean right of these other computers right so it means it's different and distant from your home computer that's a cloud so um, through this step hackers will usually build a circumvented trusted relationship with people inside the company so hackers can pretend to be uh, HVAC tech or um, people that do the janitorial work inside a company to um, find out what really is wrong with the company beforehand before they attack it so it could be your agenda that's checking out the systems but he's like a hacker in the night uh, after he, he goes to work and that could be quite dangerous as well so check your genders everybody so fourth step of execution at this point the victim's machine is compromised so if it gets to this step the network is breached and they basically the hackers will have a method of getting back into the network through the uh, rats they use at advanced persistent threat uh, which means dark comment ghost rat Zeus panda these are just adversarial groups right not just somebody that does hacking in the garage these are basically a team of elite hackers somebody who um, schedules a task and exploits it to run at different levels of the system so there are different motives of using RCs when an attacker exploits a network and this RCE means remote code execution so they can find uh, exploit within the network and explaining clearly these exploits can be launched from your local machine and hitting another network on the remote space or in the cloud and this will be able an uh, entry point of getting in so APTs use this method to steal credentials and execute backdoors on the machine at the future, future time basically persistent is very very important um, that is the next step so hackers will basically develop a beachhead a defended position on the beach taken from the enemy of the landing forces from which attack can be launched a beachhead is when the attackers they they launch a backdoor on the machine and then they upload a file when the computer first boots up and then they will mod the registry and make sure that the first process that boots up and takes place at that stage and hackers will create similar accounts like guest or service or anything that clones a a network account so if that name is John Doe John dot Doe at whatever company dot com that hacker will make uh, another account maybe like make it Jonathan Doe or something so it will be like very very similar and at this point of the attack stealth has to come in different levels of the network this is also a point where the hacker does a credential dump where he takes Mimi cats and dumps creds on the network to perhaps pass the hash at one point or the other so attackers will create payloads that are usually fully indetectable payloads that's what FUD stands for so privilege escalation controls are basically abused at this point the system will have many privileges that have root privileges. This is when the attacker will use SUIDs to privilege escalate, like 
get the freak out bins and um, applications that have root privileges will be overwritten so if a, a attacker on the windows system finds that you have a vulnerable windows uh, privilege they'll try to overtake that uh, and basically launch an attack against it using the the system <coughs> system processes maybe you have a video later on how to hack but the hack a windows machine but it'll be later some sometime in the tutorial so you have to catch that and um cron jobs also can be overtaken and it is a good way to if a cron job has a root um access on there it's a good way to hack that cron job and overtake it so that um when that cron job runs you'll get basically root and root on the system and you'll know it so at this stage the hacker will also try to take hashes found in WMIC processes and take shadow file dumps in Linux to crack the hashes that are easily dictionary hashes. Sometimes hacker will be like Kevin Mitnick who takes this 10,000 USD hash cracking machine for easy compromise. So those hack cracking machines can crack like any password. This is so powerful within two to five minutes. Yeah. And that speeds up the access. So, sixth step is defense evasion. At this point, the computer's defensive mechanism is defeated. The intruders can successfully enter in. Access tokens can be manipulated. AVs will be put in the disable mode, or they will seem to be on, but antiviruses like Windows Defender will be overridden by a fake antivirus system. This would usually be in direct command executions. And the system images would also be modified. So rootkits at this stage would also be implanted at this time so that even when main adversaries servers are removed, the lowest layer of the computer would evoke persistence. So root what a rootkit is is that it is something in the kernel that is manipulated by the hacker. So when the, ha the people try to delete all the malicious files there's still a hook in the kernel API that says oh this computer still has access to me this computer still belongs to me unless that kernel is removed by the antivirus but it's really hard this now just now because uh, um, the viruses are within the kernel already and encryption standards may change from AES 256 to RC4 so that is easily breakable and the algorithm is going to crack easier and Zord easier. Zord means uh, XOR so it's it's basically to compare to two in encryptions with the uh, encryption and the plain text to see if there's any differences and that difference would just be the be the uh, be the passphrase right so to decrypt all the uh, algorithms. So Hackers can come in through brute force as well. They usually can be logged through. They usually will be logged through. So hackers can execute adversary control code either in user line or kernel wise. And um, keys would also be forged. Hackers would also use Wireshark to intercept traffic. Man in the metal techniques are used via ARP spoofing as well and open unsecured password list will be searched on the unsecured credentials so whatever the company wants and discovers they will try to hit the weakest link or the weakest person within the company or the weakest chain to see if there are any holes within that person that could be a social engineering attack that could be like a a password that's super weak like password and that could be something else that could be extremely like weak in the system and if you know that anyone can penetrate that and a step is that discovery at this level of the breach um bloodhound will be used to do account discoveries and the LDAP domain control will be heavily enumerated at this point LDAP means the active directory domain controller and um, network sniffing would be deployed to see internal traffic. The network would be completely mo monitored and 
mapped at this point so bloodhound would do all the work at this point um, and a slower end map scan like like a T1 scan instead of a T4 uh, would be used T1 as being the least slowest to the T4 which is like a super fast and super aggressive right so you get hidden stuff within hidden minute hidden stuff but slow results so next step ninth step is lateral movement this is when the hacker would uh, try to exploit remote services and so internal spear phishing attack would be a hot entry point this could be like a computer in north korea uh, masquerading as a real person um, and collecting additional information uh, such as administrator users and internal social engineering so Bob could be taking over Bob's uh, spoofed account on the network and pretend that saying oh I'm Bob now and um, I'm using his account so people would trust Bob if these internal network and but if you ask for an administrator uh, password within the network like Bob did the account being compromised would be really fast because everyone trusts Bob right and you don't know if Alice or somebody else would trust Bob because this would be a really ta easy takedown if it was and um, this would be also downloading adversary programs by using the download command to curl or wget outside information FUD uh, deployment tools would also be used so so Webcam audio may be captured this, at this point to listen to insider conversations. And Metasport has a really good uh, module. It can be used to capture webcam and audio. Um, and people could like activate that right away. Or they use uh, PowerShell Empire, for example, to send a capture of a webcam audio. And this could be really dangerous, yeah. And this could even be used without turning the person's webcam on without them noticing. So this could be really dangerous. So yeah. Um, clipboard data may also be used. There could be like some malware that um, tracks the clipboard data. So clipboard data is everything you copy into a into a um, copy into something, and then they could track your data from there. Data from network shared drives you should, would also be accessed. That means they can access your uh, files, and if there's a password within those files that people didn't store in the uh, password manager, they will be vulnerable as well. And email collection can be also done with TAC to stealthily collect Outlook storage data or other email servers data. So, next step I'm talking about is encrypted channel. Um, encrypted channels when there's a covert channel within your um, network that the hacker uses to um, basically transfer data out in and out of the compromised system. This can be related to having a maybe a, using ping to transfer some data and having a covert encrypted channel. And the next step of this would be data exfiltration, like I said. And um, basically, they'll be creating like a shell within your network, and that shell could be used for web transfer. Uh, you can use a curl command or the wget command from the other side to download information from that server. It can also be like basically setting up simple HTTP server using Python. So once you have that on your server, um, like a simple HTTP server like hackers use always, um, like Python, tag M, then simple HTTP server, and then the port, that could be used as a good method of transference uh, in the network, uh, physical or web transfer. So physical, I'm talking about um, as the hackers already broken into the system, broken into the place, and just stealing hard drives from the from the premise. So once the adversary has full control over the network, key may remove access 
destroy data, manipulate data, deface the web infrastructure and bring, bring the whole network down through the denial of service. This is the last step, the 13th technique. So 13th being the bad number, of course. Um, so the adversary has now has full control, can issue a breach on the system. Everyone knows about it. And even the news media knows about it. Everyone knows about it. And God, their, their systems are down now. And nobody can recover anything because uh, the system is totally pwned. <laughs> and just domain controller is like heavily destroyed. And yeah, there's a breach. There's a major breach. And everyone knows about it. So the reputation of the company is down. And yeah, that's really the baddest impact. A final note, adversarial red teams will always play it out like a Hydra. So um, you destroy one head, destroy one hacker in the system, three or four more go back. So they have persistence always. So if you destroy one guy that's in your system, three to four other hackers will take over. And I'm just saying that it is impossible to stop an army that is constantly and tactically grinding on your networks like Hydra. Right? So be vigilant and stay safe, everybody. Stay safe during COVID and hope you enjoy this message, okay? Cheers. Bye-bye. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and take care.